going on guys welcome to episode number 38 here on the proven knowledge podcast this is the creator series today i welcomed a very dope female mc her name is aphrodite uh today she kind of revealed her journey how it began in brooklyn and uh, now she's in philadelphia and um she revealed kind of what she's been doing the last year or so as far as how quarantine has affected her how she used to be going to a lot of live events and uh like social events to make connections with people um but she's been able to adapt and create her own events uh through online through zoom uh i'm not sure what other platform she uses probably like instagram and things like that the normal social platforms um we discussed her music a little bit uh i I would encourage a lot of you to go check out her music if you like uh very um introspective rap but also aggressive uh hip-hop uh because she has very dope material she has a few singles out and uh, an ep that she released a couple years ago she just dropped a new song called dystopia uh, i'll probably put the link to that in the youtube so you guys can hear that song to start out with but she revealed that she has a mixtape in the works could be out in the next six months she said but she's focusing more in 2021 on her brand first um so we might hear that we might not but either way i'm looking forward to see seeing what she comes up with and everything uh but more than anything i appreciated her words on you know the advice she's been given about you know kind of being able to stay patient and take everything one day at a time take everything one opportunity at a time because at the end of the day you know that's the most important thing we can do you know we kind of uh want to be in a rush to get to the blessings that you know we feel like we're deserved but at the end of the day i you know i feel personally like everything has its own time and you know we aren't always the judge of when that's going to happen so it's important to just you know wake up every day with a purpose be able to uh feed the world something creative and uh just continue the journey and you know even through the tough times uh we can always have something to work on to get better at and to look forward to so i appreciate her joining the show this week and i hope you guys enjoy this episode so let's get right into it Welcome everyone to episode number 38 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today's guest is out of Philadelphia. She's a really dope MC. I appreciate her reaching out. Her name is Aphrodite. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm thank great you for as well. Me, yes, Madam. yes. And thank you for reaching out, like taking the initiative and everything when I, you know, sent that email out. And I, uh, yeah, I've definitely been like looking for people to do more podcasts with and talk to people more with. So thanks for doing what you do for me. Absolutely. And I'm excited to have you here. Um, so basically, just to start off every episode, we kind of have the guests give a little bit of background info, maybe those who have never heard of you or your music. Like, how did you get into music? Uh, how'd you get your name? All that good stuff. Right. So my artist name is Aphrodite, just like the goddess, but I actually spell it with an F. Um, it does have a lot to do, you know, with my hair. I have an Afro, you know, but for me personally, I chose the name because Aphrodite, the goddess, she represents, you know, love and beauty and her Roman equivalent is Venus. And astrologically, um, my I'm a Libra um, and the sign Libra is ruled by Venus and there's kind of just a lot of other consistencies that I always saw with her she was always my favorite so at some point I kind of just took to the name myself and I kind of just stuck with it I resonated with it it was kind of cute it's fun you know people ask me about it all the time but I kind of just really resonate with it um I've been I make hip-hop music I've been making music for maybe about two years now almost three now um, but I actually got into music um, from writing first. I started doing poetry. Um, I fell in love with music growing up because I was in the bands um, since like middle school and high school, you know, so that's how I got into music. And then it became words and then it became music and words, you know. So that's kind of how I did that. It came a lot from my friends' encouragement when I started college. I'm originally from Brooklyn and New York. I went to high school in Queens. So I came to Philly for college. I just graduated from Temple. So I've feel like I've definitely developed a lot of my kind of artist life and kind of network in Philadelphia, but it's going well for me. I feel like I'm definitely still developing my sound and finding out what works for me. Mm -hmm. Well, congrats on graduating. That's a great, that's a great thing in itself right there. And I didn't know you were from Brooklyn. So that's kind of interesting. I had, I had read everything about like you being in Philly and everything. So I didn't know like if that's where you were just based or whatnot, but that's pretty interesting. And, and it's good to hear that you've kind of had like, a nice journey going just to get to this point and kind of like you're starting to kind of like develop your sound to where people are trying to take or really just starting to take notice honestly 
So for sure, and it's crazy because at this point, I feel like people know me for a lot of different things sometimes. So it's it feels like although I've been kind of growing my brand and my name and just kind of doing what I do for so long at this point for mm-hmm. a couple of years, it still feels like I'm at a point where I kind of had to reintroduce myself or almost like revamp or step it up a bit. You know, mm-hmm. some people know me for poetry, and people will ask me, "Oh, when will I hear your poetry again?" And some people want to hear music. Some people have heard me sing at open mics and stuff. So it's definitely interesting. I think it's really dope and it's definitely introduced me to a lot of people and opportunities Mm. for sure super super dope so i know you just dropped a new song called dystopia like probably last week actually and that great song by the way congrats on that um so i'm kind of intrigued and i know you just said you write poetry as well how does the writing process for you specifically begin like is there ever a certain time that like you just hear a beat and you can just go in and maybe not write anything or is every right. kind of well, situation also, different? Sometimes I feel like I can separate the writing process and the song creating process. Um, because when I write, sometimes I'll just write to write or I'll write to get off a feeling or to get something off of my mind and stuff. So sometimes I'll write a poem that might later turn into a song. Sometimes in the middle of me writing a poem or journaling, sometimes I'm just journaling, you know, mm. uh, I'll get inspired or it almost like it. sometimes just starting to write feels like the warm up to writing a song. So sometimes I'll take a break from journaling and I'll just write. Um, A lot of times I tend to have like lo-fi music playing in the background. That's like my thing, you know. So sometimes the the beat will resonate with me a lot. Sometimes I'll be with my friends listening to their beats and it'll resonate. So sometimes it honestly depends on whatever the song ends up making me feel I should kind of bring to life or bring my attention to. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I'll write to the beat and then let the beat guide it other times if i'm like no i want to write a song about this and this is how it's gonna go so i have to find a beat to match sometimes that process feels a little bit longer but i definitely feels like it's more encompassed in the feeling i want to get across in the song Mm. so are you kind of like more of a homebody like are you doing a lot of this just kind of in your house or are you in the studio like or does it not really matter to you so I usually record in the studio. I'm actually working on building my home studio. That's one of my graduation gifts to myself, mm. you know, um, is building a home studio so that I can record kind of more often and lay down more verses and things like that. I personally record my songs in different in in a studio, um, whether let it be in Brooklyn. Recently, I've been able to record in Carolina in North Carolina. So that was pretty cool. Um I feel like generally, you know, I wouldn't really consider myself a homebody. I enjoy being out. I enjoy being surrounded by people with my friends. Even if we're working and I'm with my friends brainstorming or doing something like that, Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think I'm out and about, but I understand the importance of taking time to yourself, and I'm not afraid to do that either. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I try to balance it out, you know? Mm -hmm. It's always good to have the balance, too, because I think a lot of people, like, they kind of get, like, either they're too reclusive and they're not social enough, or maybe they have been too social and then they're like oh I need some alone time just a little bit like I gotta work on myself a bit but like that home studio that that would be incredible I like that's goals for me even like eventually one day I want to get to the point where I can have something that's kind of built up to where other people can come in too and kind of we can work together in that like atmosphere and everything so congrats on that thank you um so obviously you're into poetry you're into music so I assume you grew up on a lot of different types of music and different types of people. So who do you think are your biggest inspirations uh, that have influenced you up to this point? So honestly, I feel like I listened to a lot of different music growing up. And as much as I'm a hip hop artist now, I feel like I didn't really get into hip hop until later. So I feel like being in a band definitely kind of influenced a lot of the way I interpret and listen to music. Um, and that's why it's always, it's kind of evolved. Cause when I was younger, I kind of just listened to a lot of pop music, you know, like hip hop was always around, Mm -hmm. you know, my father's from Brooklyn. So I, the time I spent with my father, we were there listening to Jay-Z, Kanye, Run DMC, all them people, you know what I mean? Um, but you know, my mom, we kind of just listened to a lot of pop music. Sometimes we'd throw in some Spanish music or some classic rock songs or whatever, you know, like, um, but I definitely feel like in terms of the artist I am now, a lot of my inspiration for music came from the way I interpreted it or heard it and understanding music and knowing the different keys and how it works. And, you know, that definitely kind of added a dimension to music as a whole. Mm. So, yeah, yeah I, I haven't really heard anyone because I've heard a few people say they were in like band and choir, but it's kind of interesting to hear that that's kind of like where the basis came from to where you are now, because like it's something that you might not think about as an artist like if you were in the band you'd probably be like well I was in band but I kind of just 
fucked around with a trumpet and like I was terrible and I didn't really do much with it. But like it kind of all goes back to like the roots at the end of the day and just kind of like what influenced you that ends up leading to where you are now. So I guess like having that experience, even if it wasn't great for a lot of people, is kind of important, I guess is what I'm trying to say. To me, honestly, like, it went pretty well. Like, Mm -hmm. I was very good. I played the flute. I started playing the flute in sixth grade. I played it up until high school graduation. You know, I played at graduation and stuff. Um, And I feel like middle school was definitely my most kind of progressive period. I kind of felt like I wasn't too challenged in high school, but that's partially because I was already very good. Mm -hmm. I was top of my class, top of my music theory class, first chair in the band, most three out of four years of my high school career. You know what I mean? So for me, it was definitely like, it showed me kind of how much of a leader I could be, how good I could be at something, what kind of dedication could could do for, you know, your craft. I feel like that was the first time I was like working. I was working very consistently and I was very dedicated to the flute without really realizing how many how much time I was putting in you know I had band class in the morning then I would skip lunch to go practice and then if after school ran late or there wasn't this or that I would go back and then I had my flute so sometimes I'd practice at home on the weekends you know Mm -hmm. like I didn't think of it as you know spending too much time doing it it's something that I care to be good at so I feel like that kind of change my perspective on music because I never also ironically never really thought of myself to be a superstar or a pop star one day like I was like why would I do that (laughs) you know like it just never necessarily seemed plausible I feel like I didn't know how possible it was Mm -hmm. and then when I got older you know and I came to college and I see people you know literally living their dreams and stuff it's just like well you know maybe you know I have a chance like I never thought I was gonna make music I knew I was gonna write poetry never knew I was gonna make music I've gotten this far here I am making music and here people are liking me so I'm like okay you know what like I think this is something not only does it feel good to me but it's something I can share with people you mm-hmm. know so yeah it's good too that it's all come pretty naturally to you like you said you didn't really feel like you had to like force that even at an early age you were just kind of like it just came to you and you just kind of went for it you know what I mean so that's always the best uh, part to me about anything creatively um so who would you say that you've listened to or that you do listen to now that you'd ever want to do like a song with or maybe like a dream collab of yours that you kind of want to want to make happen soon? Yeah, my dream collab is definitely Missy Elliott. Ten toes down without mm. a doubt. And then if, if God wants to go crazy, give me a Missy Elliott Timberland collab, <laughs> you know, then I just I don't really need nothing else. But that's doing it for me. One album I always find myself going back to is Super Duper Fly, you know, like it never gets old mm. <laughs> from when I was younger. So that's the one for me <laughs> that would be super dope because i hear like in your music you just have that energy like and you got the confidence too like hey, so yeah you so, would, one day i can get my videos up there you know have some do a Millie, missy elliott type thing that would be really cool that would be the, that would be insane for real so <laughs> i hope i hope you can make that happen because I, I could definitely see that for real um hey. Yeah, I'll start planning. Yeah. So out of uh, out of anyone that you've worked with so far, or that you've already worked with, who do you think are some of your favorite people to kind of make music with, like producers, engineers, or even other artists? Yeah, honestly, my favorite people to kind of work with and record with and stuff are honestly my guys at Space Syndicate, NYC. There's some friends I met in college, um, MRI and Genesis. They're a duo, but they're a collective that also has videographers and stuff. But MRI and Genesis played a big part in what I do now. Like, I recorded for the first time, my first song ever. You know, I recorded it in MRI's house in Manhattan, filming in his bedroom, you know. And honestly, to this day, some of the verses I did then, some of the songs we've made since then, you know, they're still great. They still slap. Um, they're very creative. They're very dedicated to what they do. They're very talented at what they do. They produce. They engineer. They rap. They do a, they do a lot with their own artistry. Um, and um, they're definitely very inspirational. And they have a, they see the big vision. And that's something I've always admired about them, you know. So shout out to them for real. Shout out Space Syndicate. Shout out MRI. We have a song dropping next month. It's called Tiempo. You know, you can follow me on Instagram or him on Instagram for all of the rest of the details about that but i'm excited you know Mm -hmm. well i'll be on the lookout for that because i'm ready to hear that especially um so i got this next question i kind of want to reword what i had um so i know now that you are from brooklyn originally so i guess the question i have is since you moved to philadelphia what are the biggest differences between the scene in philadelphia the music scene as opposed to brooklyn and how do you think you've 
do you have do you see do you feel like you've had an advantage in one place as opposed to the other or you don't really notice yeah. much of a difference um, i definitely think there's a difference it's undeniably different um i would definitely say the dynamic between fellow creatives in philadelphia and in new york is different um new york is a lot more cloudy everyone kind of knows that new york new york is a lot more about kind of your reputation and who knows you Mm -hmm. i feel like at home it's a lot easier to be like wait who are you oh no one knows you okay i don't really want to listen to you you know and i have found that in philadelphia there's a lot more kind of just genuine like yeah i support what you do like shout out to you or a lot of other people that are also like oh yeah i'm doing this too you know i feel like philadelphia has definitely and the art scene in general has kind of helped me see the entrepreneurialism behind being an artist you know Mm -hmm. um not to say i wouldn't have gotten that in new york but i definitely think it's different the way people handle it like it seems a little bit more communal here don't get me wrong people have their differences there's a whole bunch of beef that goes on in between you know but that's gonna happen everywhere but i feel like philadelphia has definitely welcomed me with open arms you know um sometimes i guess i stand out whether it's my accent i don't know what about it you know sometimes people are like where are you from because you're not from around here you know so i don't know it might be an advantage you know i guess i just kind of stick out sometimes so i don't know but it's definitely different but i can appreciate them both because i do still go home to new york sometimes for shows and open mics and stuff like that when i have the opportunity to so yeah but Mm. there's no place like home don't get me wrong Mm. Yeah, I was kind of intrigued because I've never been to New York or Philly yet. I've been to L.A. and like my brother, for example, like he brought up a good point about L.A. is kind of like it's the place where everyone goes to say they're working with one another. But when you reach out to them, they're always busy. Like you can never get them when you're in L.A. because everybody's working with everybody and everyone's always busy. So it's kind of like interesting to hear about other cities, too. And it sounds like New York is kind of like that a little bit where it's like, Unless you're, like, very much in the know with a lot of people all the time, it's going to be hard to, like, get your footing there. But And you have to find kind of the right events to be able to do that, mm-hmm. you know. And, I mean, like, anywhere the events could be disorganized and people don't really have an official kind of say on what's going on. But I do think there's always a lot to do. And one thing is about, about New York is a lot bigger. It takes longer to travel mm-hmm. places. In Philadelphia, I could find myself at two, three events in one day. In New York, sometimes that might be harder if you don't have a way to get around, or sometimes you just don't feel like driving 45 minutes across the same borough to get somewhere, you know? Mm-hmm. So, it's just different kind of dynamics in different places, I suppose. Mm. So, let's dip into time management a little bit. For you specifically, at least lately, what do you think has been the biggest issue as far as, like, managing your music and, like, everything else you got going on in your life? So, I have been done with school. Like, I finished my last semester at the beginning of December. So, it's only really been a month that I've had, like, all free time. You know, I haven't been working. So, this is the first time for me that I have all the time in the world. I have all the time that for the last four years I wished I had, you mm-hmm. know, like I don't have the assignments I wish I had. It's, 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 I'm in a very transitional space with myself and with kind of my lifestyle and stuff like that. So I definitely feel like right now I'm trying to work on focusing on the things that are most important because I feel like the change you know the transition felt a little abrupt to me I don't know if I welcomed the change as much as I could have so I think that I could work on kind of prioritizing you know what's 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 good for me what's not not overwhelming myself I do have the tendency to overwhelm myself sometimes because I have so many ideas but I think I could definitely work on knowing what's important and not stretching myself too thin you know Mm -hmm. That kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning, which is like just realizing if things are getting a little too much and just being like, I got to take a minute and just work on myself for a little bit. And just like, I feel like a lot of people sometimes they feel like that's being selfish. You know what I mean? Like they're kind of afraid to take that time. But I think like in the last few years myself, the way I've been viewing it uh, is just kind of like if you can't work on yourself first, you're never going to be able to have those relationships with other people in any form of capacity. So it's really important to figure out, like, how to do that for yourself and really take the time to do it. So it's good to hear that, you know, you kind of have that understanding. And I think that's probably helping you a lot creatively as well. 
Yeah, for sure. Especially on the days, you know, on the better days when I do kind of have things in order and I did what I had to do or, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. have too many things on my to-do list. It feels good to be able to have enough headspace to work on music or have enough headspace to kind of just relax. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes when you're worried about too many things, you don't even give yourself the chance to relax. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to sleep thinking about things, wake up thinking about things, go to sleep thinking about things, you know. But when you kind of take little bites, it makes it a little easier. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So as far as business and like finances go, as far as it's related to music, what has been an issue for you so far on your journey, if anything, that you'd like to share? Yeah, so so one thing about like COVID in itself has definitely showed me that a lot of like my fan base and a lot of the way I've grown my network was in person, you know, Mm -hmm. and I kind of always know, I always knew that I always made time for events, but not being able to do that definitely put into perspective like, okay, there's obviously a bunch of different ways for people to enjoy my music or what I'm doing, you know? So um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a problem because at this point it's a project I'm kind of working on, but, you know, kind of like expanding my music to have more content so that I could do collabs with bigger brands to do stuff, you know, like Tiny Desk Concert or like Color Studios, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And being able to, you know, do playlisting and get more people to actually listen to my music and stuff like that. I feel like that's something I'm working on. Um, Another thing that I started doing that I decided to commit myself to recently is throwing events and curating events. So that's something I'm doing. Um, The name of my brand is Goddess Goods, but I actually call my event kind of series Afroductions because, you know, Aphrodite Productions. So it's Afroductions. Um... So on that page and with that, I kind of throw events. I have an event that I'm throwing every month this year. It's called the Artwork Cypher, where we kind of just have an open cypher with a bunch of different artists. Um, And then we have headlining artists, and they kind of play some freestyle games, almost like a wild and out kind of thing, but less jokey. You know, it's not really about insulting people. It's more about, like what bars you have and how lyrically adept you are, you know, and then the f- and then they get to perform a song and there's a winner, you know, and things like that. So that's the event I'm doing every month, first Friday in Philadelphia. And then I kind of have some miscellaneous events that I'm planning also, you know, open mics, I want to try to do a brunch, you know, things like that. So, yeah, that's fin- finances are definitely something that's been put into perspective, especially because I don't I'm done with school. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like I quit and I, it's just not a fallback because I'm done. So it's like, okay, well, if this is, it's kind of like the reality of, okay, well, if I'm going to make music and make art for a living, then how am I going to do that? You mm-hmm. know, so. It's important yeah. too, to take the initiative. Like you said, like a lot of the live events and things that you were attending kind of ended. So you kind of had to reassess the situation and be like, okay, how can I like create something myself now, like through online and through the other platforms to kind of keep the momentum going and not just completely like have nothing you know what I mean so. when when events aren't kind of just falling into my lap anymore because I would go to one event and then meet someone like hey my events tomorrow come through and I'm like okay you know like so when that's not happening then it's kind of like okay well my resolution was to just have my own events let them be virtual or not or limited capacity like you create the space you want to be in you mm-hmm. know so And with that said, hopefully, you know, some of these live things and in-person things start coming back in the next few years. You know, we can only hope for the best, but it's important too to know how to adapt to the circumstances always. Um, So what do you say or what would you say is probably the best piece of advice you've been given as far as how to approach a music career? That's a good question. The best piece of advice I've been given... I would have to say is to kind of like do one right thing at a time. And at first I was kind of like, well, what does that mean? You know, like Mm -hmm. I do the right thing all the time because I have 10,000 things on my to-do list and I make sure I do 100 of them every day. You know, but doing the right thing is literally about choosing something that's important right now and doing it recognizing what you can do in a moment whether you feel helpless or doubtful or sad or happy or ready to work you know this one thing that you can do to get you closer to where you have to be so it's always about doing the one right thing not about doing everything you know Mm -hmm. Lynn that can speak for your bigger picture you know that spoke for me when I was like okay well what do I want to do do I want to have a regular job do I want to focus on this degree get my research degree you know do whatever I wanted to do do I want to be an artist or a 
you know, like there's so many different shoes you can fill. And it's not to say that you can't change your shoes sometimes, but like you definitely got to do one thing at a time, you know? Mm. So I try to focus on that a lot. Mm. That's always super important. So that's some great advice. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, so if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe tell yourself anything, give yourself advice, or maybe not change anything at all, what do you think you'd do? 10 years ago, I would tell myself to think bigger. I would tell myself to imagine more for myself. Not to say that I was a small thinker, but I never, I I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I felt like I always kind of gravitated toward what it sounded like I should be doing. Mm. And one thing that I feel like I've still kind of been working on even now that I'm an adult and I have to think of my later adult life, you know, it's kind of like think bigger for yourself. Like there's no way you'll be able to do something if you can't imagine or envision yourself doing it or just kind of being able to say like, I can do this, you know? Um, I wouldn't even necessarily say it held me back at that point. It's just something I would have wanted to keep in mind, you know? Um, yeah, at some points in the last 10 years, I think I could have been reminded that it's okay to want more for myself, you know? Mm. So 10 years from now, where do you think you want to be? Where do you envision yourself being, you think? 10 years from now, I hope I'm on a beach. <laughs> so I hope I'm on a beach at my beach house in Mexico. That's what I hope I'm doing. But 10 years from now, um, I hope I've created my 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 album my to pip a butterfly my one album you know my 2014 forest hills drive like Mm. i hope i've created my one statement album i hope that in the next 10 years i can create some of the best art i have created ever because i feel like now i'm creating some of the better stuff in my artistic career but who knows where it'll take me 10 years from now i want to have at least one passport book filled at least one 10 years from now, we're talking billboards, we're talking award shows. At this point, we're talking our own business. You know how Rihanna got Fenty, feel me? I'm going to have something too, you know? 10 years from now, I definitely, you know, want to have lived my life. If the, In the next 10 years, my goals for my 20s was, you know, take chances, take risks, see the world, like, live my life, you know? And I hope that in the next 10 years, I'll be able to say that I did exactly that, you know? Mm-hmm. And that I thought big and I saw myself in big places and I did that, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I want for my life. Mm. Well, let's look more at the immediate future for a minute. Uh, I know you've dropped some singles. You dropped an EP a couple years ago. So what can we expect this year? Are we getting an album this year? Like, what can you reveal to us? So this year, I feel like I'm still getting a lot of my details together. Um, I am looking to drop a mixtape soon. I was planning for this year, but I feel like I'm definitely looking on building my brand and my business some more. So I don't want to, you know, put too much on my plate. But a mixtape is in the works, which you can expect in the next six months, though, is at least two events every month. If you ever want to come, see me, meet me, participate, hop on the mic, you could do that. Uh, I do have some more singles dropping. I have at least three or four songs that I'm ready to get off and share with people. Um, I have a couple songs that I'll be working with a female directing, like producing team for on the music video. So I look forward to that. Um, Yeah, this year is really about new music and living a better, healthier life, you know? Mm -hmm. So I look forward to sharing that with people. I look forward to, I'm making it a point to share my journey more, you know, so people could see a little bit more of the behind the scenes. So this year is definitely about content. There's gonna be a lot of content, songs, music, pictures, videos, all of that good Mm -hmm. stuff, you know? So I'm excited. So last question for you. Do you have any final words of wisdom? Final words of wisdom, let me see. What's coming to me? (laughs) Um, Honestly, I'm just going to share something that's been speaking to me lately. I feel like you got to be patient, you know? Mm. Don't rush yourself. Don't rush anything. Don't rush the process. You can't rush the healthy body. You can't rush the perfect diet. You can't rush the raise or the promotion. You can't really rush anything. You can't rush the mail that's messed up because of COVID. Like, you can't rush anything, you know? And I feel like being able to recognize when the things you can't control 
are taking control of your energy and it's making you upset and it's making you frustrated and it's draining the energy that you could be using to either keep yourself at peace or do something productive, you know, like Mm -hmm. you just gotta be patient and worry about what's most important to you, you know? At the end of the day, being the better version of yourself is always gonna be what's most important. So I would definitely say to focus on that. Keep that in mind. And even on the worst day, feel me, find something to be grateful for. Just relax, Mm -hmm. you know? Aphrodite, thank you very much. Uh, That's all I have for you today. And like I said, I'm looking forward to the new music. I'm looking forward to all the projects you got coming up. Uh, And hopefully we can do this again sometime, maybe in person. You know, maybe once this whole thing kind of gets subsided a little bit, maybe we could uh, reconnect. For sure. I would love to. And thank you again for having me. This was lovely, you know, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the interviews you did as well. Thanks, everyone, for listening. That was episode number 38. Uh, as always, hit that support button on your podcast streaming platform if you want to send any funds. It goes towards us getting new guests, uh, making a better experience for you as the listener. And until this time next week, we'll see you then.